If you are considering a career in sales, I'm gonna give you some of the highest paying sales job you need to know about if you're just getting started. And these are jobs that don't require any sales experience at all in many cases. So let's go ahead and dive in and how you can make a full income doing this. The first job we're gonna talk about when it comes to high paying sales role is going to be the classic sales development rep. In America, you can get paid 64 to $96,000 a year doing sales development. And of course, different salaries, different countries, depending on where you are, but let's talk about America and the Western world. So a lot of you guys might be thinking, wait, that makes no freaking sense. How can you make that much money being an entry level salesperson? And let me explain to you. So companies like Oracle, Salesforce, Y Combinator back startup, they are willing to pay this amount of money for sales development reps. So what does that actually entail? You don't have to have any experience. You come in, you basically learn how to write cold emails, write LinkedIn messages, or you cold call. And all you're doing is setting up meetings for another person who is considered a closer. So all you're really doing is setting up meetings. This might be a appointment setter or setter. There's many different words for this, but at the end of the day, it's a sales development rep. So typically you're gonna get paid like a salary. So it might be like 45K base salary and then 20, 30K of commission on top of that, which is where you get these numbers, right? And if you're like a little more senior, you literally can be getting close to like 80, 90K a year, literally just setting up meetings. Why do companies pay so much for this? Well, typically it's because they have a really good product that makes a lot of money so that they can still pay their sales rep a lot because in the end, they're making so much more money on the back end, right? I personally think sales of MR reps at software companies is a huge opportunity for a lot of people because software is something that's constantly growing. Technology is continuing to be one of the fastest growing sector in the world. So why not join a booming industry, right? Which is what I teach in sales legacy. And also I started my career in software sales as well. So I know from personal experience. Now from there, if you are tired of being a sales developer and you want to move forward, the next row is an account executive. Now, according to Glassdoor, they get paid around 137 to 200 131k a year. Typically, in the traditional software world, you got to start out as a sales development rep first, and then you move into the account executive role, meaning that you know how to set meetings, you know the product and all that stuff. Now it's time for you to close deals. Now, other companies who don't have a formalized structure, if you have the skills and the tenacity and ability to learn, then you can actually start as an account executive right off the bat, even if you have no sales experience. I actually started as an account executive who also generated my own leads at Oracle, right? That was my first job at a call. So if Oracle is willing to hire at that time, of course, now it's different. They're more structured than other companies are willing to do it too, especially the smaller software companies, right? But it all depends on your skill and your personality. If you can't close, then obviously you're not going to get the job, right? Why do account executives get paid so much? Well, typically if total pay, like let's say it's 120K, right? 130K, whatever. Well, if they're paying you that much, most likely they're doing like 50-50. So they'll do like 60K base salary and then 60K commission on top. And your job is just to close. So you want to close as much as possible to get that 60K. You can get paid a few hundred K a year as you advance up the ladder, right? If you're working at like a Facebook or Google and you're kind of like a senior account executive or field account executive where you're at the highest level flying out to clients, taking them out to dinner, all that stuff, you can get paid, you know, hundreds of thousands. In some cases, some people can make like a million dollars a year, two million a year if they're at, at the highest level of like working at Oracle or Salesforce, right? They typically don't get paid more than that from what I understand, but that's pretty much the range. It's pretty good too, because if you're working at a large company, you're basically in your position, you know how to do the job, then you're kind of raking in a few hundred K a year, which is pretty chill, to be honest. It's a lot of pressure, but it's like once you understand the game of sales, it's actually not that difficult because you're just repeating the skills that you already have. But if you're starting out, right, obviously you're not, gonna, you're not gonna start out as a top sales rep at Oracle off the bat. You're probably gonna start at either a smaller software company or a consulting company, maybe info products as well. That's kind of popular these days as a closer. Basically what will happen in those scenarios is they'll be like, all right, during these hours, you gotta be on the phone. We're gonna just book your calendar with a bunch of meetings. You gotta take the call and you have to convince them to close a deal, right? Right? Typically, you might get like 10 to 25% of the value of whatever you're closing. So if you're closing something for $10,000, if you get 20% of that, that's 2K, right? The numbers will vary depending on who you're working for and what you're doing. And these days, a lot of people want to be remote closers, meaning that you can work anywhere around the world. They'll schedule meetings on your calendar. And all you have to do is spend like eight hours a day on the phone trying to close these deals. If you close a couple deals a day, then that's really a good income for you, right? And that's gaining more and more traction because people are realizing they could do closing online, right? You don't have to to go into an office every single day. So that's definitely one of the appeals to uh, closing. 
a lot of people choose to do that, especially in the info product space, right? Because typically for an influencer or people that are generating a lot of leads for like any type of like info marketing, they'll generate the leads with their YouTube channel, their TikTok, their Instagram, right? Their email list. And then they're just funneling calls to use because it, the founder doesn't want to take them anymore, right? And so that's a definitely a big opportunity for a lot of people. So you want to learn more about that, check out Sales Legacy on how you can be a remote closer because that's really big. And so let's move on to the next one, which is going to be account management. I've had some friends who actually started in account management just like out of school. You could be making like 118 to 188K. If you're starting out, realistically, you're probably going to be making like 60 to 80K starting. So what exactly is account management? Basically, when a company closes a deal, they want to keep that relationship for the longest time possible because they want to rank in as much money as possible. But there has to be some kind of sales rep that maintains the relationship that renews the customer. So if a customer signs a three year deal after those three years, well, they got to sign again, right? But who's in charge of that? An account manager would be. So an account manager basically has a list of the companies that they have to keep track of essentially and keep the relationship with. And you know, every day they're just talking to different people, making sure that they're getting the value out of the product and service. And then when the time comes and be like, Hey, you know, we'd love to talk about what it would look like to renew, to renegotiate, whatever the case is, because things might change. They need to scale down or scale up. And that is the responsibility of the account manager. In my personal opinion, the account manager has the chillest job because you're actually just working with people that already love your product and service and you're just maintaining the relationship. For sales development rep, you're kind of like trying to convince people to take a meeting. For account executive, you have to convince people to buy your product and service. And then account managers, they are just convincing people to stay right? Realistically for a company, the most money is actually made with the account manager because the more people stay, the higher the valuation of their company and the more recurring revenue that they have. So account managers actually maintain the flow of money the best for the company. They're all kind of important, right? But then if you already signed a big client paying a million dollars a year, you just got to keep that client for 10 years and that's 10 mil, right? Whereas for a new customer, you have to like close them every time and convince them and all that stuff. This is why account managers get paid a lot for having such a chill job, because even though it's not as difficult as closing a new client, it's still very important because you don't want to lose that relationship and they're very valuable, right? And so like account managers at Google, like you've been making like a few hundred K a year because people spend so much money. So the way to play the sales game, in my opinion, right, is you want to try your best to work with the best product or service. Like if you work at a Google or a Facebook, right, people are going to buy ads. Like that's just never going to change. So the more money you make because you're always getting a percentage, right? And so you just want to strategically think, where can you sit where there's the maximum flow of money coming to you and you're just collecting your percentages, right? So you don't want to be in a place where there's not enough volume, the product's not good, because then it's kind of like there's not enough money flow. If you're working at places where there's already money flow, you're just taking a small percentage, but that's literally hundreds of K per year for you as an employee, right? Which is amazing. If you're going for like a smaller company, they might give you a higher percentage. They might be like, yo, I'll pay you 40% of whatever I make, right? But if you have to work so freaking hard to bring in that money, you might have a better time just working at Google or something and just collecting bigger inflows, right? Those are all things you have to think about when it comes to your career. And you want to make sure that every step you're taking advances you in the place where you want to go, right? Ideally, most people kind of want to work at best companies with the best products, collecting the best percentages, right? That's typically how it is. So those would be your Oracles, your Googles, your Facebook, your Salesforce. That's typically like the top of the food chain when it comes to tech, at least. Some people like more risk and they wanna make more money by taking working at smaller companies, that's great too. But I think at the end, people gradually just work their way to the best companies and then they just kind of sit there and chill and they live their lives with their families, right? But usually people younger will take that risk. Like I took that risk when I was, you know, starting my sales career. After Oracle, I joined a Y Combinator back startup. So it just depends on what you want, what skill set you want to. If you want to be an entrepreneur, I would recommend getting like big experience at these large companies. It teaches you a lot. Working at a startup teaches you a lot as well and it's much faster. But by having both, you're able to, I guess, start your own business much more easier, which is what I did, right? So everyone's a little different, but you want to make sure you don't work at any dead end jobs that you want to keep advancing every year, every two years. You don't want to just be doing one thing forever unless you're making more money, getting working at better companies, getting higher commission, all that kind of stuff. So those are going to be those top three jobs that I would recommend when it comes to starting your sales career. And if you are starting your sales career, you want to make sure to check out my masterclass where I teach everything you need to know about sales and even how to get a high paying sales job at saleslegacy.com. So give this video a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and I will see you in the next one.